Okay, that's not looking too bad, but we'll add a second set of horns along the back of the head. Hey guys, recently I was reading through my comments and came across somebody who had said that sculpting was terrifying for them and they preferred proportional editing because they could do that with modeling and with a mouse and a keyboard rather than having to try to sculpt with a mouse or a tablet. But what I thought I would do in this video is show that user and the rest of you that sculpting is nothing to be afraid of. In fact, it's something that can be very fun, very freeing, and be done very, very quickly. So we're going to use uh, a tablet and a pen. And if you don't have one of those, I highly recommend picking one up. You can check the link in the description for my recommendation on a tablet for beginners. And we're gonna use one brush and dynamic topology, and we're going to create a dragon's head. And the catch is we're gonna do all of this in under five minutes. So let me ask Google to set a timer and then we'll start sculpting, set up everything, and just kind of make this work. And I'll talk my way through the process as well. Hey Google, set a timer for five minutes, please. You said the magic word, five minutes, starting now. Okay, so five minutes have started and we're gonna take a look at the snake hook brush. So if you're not familiar with the snake hook brush, you can check out the video that's going to appear in the card here where I talk about how to use it effectively. And so that I don't get smudge on my pen tablet, I'm going to put on my glove that I happen to cut up so that I can sculpt here. So I'm already eating some of my time away, but I feel like this is stuff that's important. Okay, so let's look at this from the very, very front. Now, you shouldn't sculpt in orthographic mode. It won't look, but I, it won't look right. Things will uh, come apart. But what we're going to do is just increase the size of our brush and strength is at 100%. And we will just grab and pull. And we'll just grab and pull and form. Actually, let's go ahead and lower that strength. Maybe look to the side a little bit. And we'll take this bottom up to create somewhat of a jawline. Okay, that's going pretty well so far. Great, come in here. Pull this out just a tad to create somewhat of a snout. We'll take this forward. All right, now I am going to smooth things out. So I'm using one brush and the smooth, which can be accessed by holding the shift key for all of this. All right, so that way we can kind of get a smooth look to our model, but that's too thin for a snout. So let's pull this out. Okay, smooth that down a little bit. All right, and the head is a little bit too round, so we'll bring this head in using nothing but the snake hook brush here. And then smooth that out a little bit. Okay, now it's not that bad. It's not looking fantastic yet. And I haven't actually done anything with this sculpt before, so this is all 100% just on the fly sculpting to show you that Creating something cool doesn't take a lot of effort and it doesn't take a lot of uh, planning beforehand. It should if you're going to do sculpting well, but it doesn't have to. Okay, so we've got these eyebrows here and we've kind of got the beginnings of an eye socket. So we're going to just pull this area out a little bit and this will act like our eye socket and then um, take this section out a little bit further so that it comes down and gives us the beginning of the upper jaw and we can kind of maybe pull this in or pull it out and down okay and smooth that out all right so we've got the beginnings of a face but let's go ahead shrink down our brush size and push in an eye socket here now it's not going the way that I want it exactly, but that's okay. So we'll push in and then come over here. And then we can smooth that out a little bit and that'll create our eyes, which, you know, not perfect, but they're beginning. 
we can maybe shrink this down, punch in a nose hole. Okay, and I'm gonna just gonna change this from relative detail to brush detail. So that way I can get vertices at the size of my brush rather than based on how close I am to the screen. So I find sculpting with dynamic topology is easier when we do it that way. Let me go ahead and smooth that out a little bit. All right, now every dragon needs horns. So let's just zoom out a little bit and create some horns here and going along the back of the head. So we'll take this and kind of create a little horn. And in fact, let's actually, we're gonna, we're just gonna bring this up. Okay, that's not looking too bad, but we'll add a second set of horns along the back of the head. We can come in here and fix this up. Just smooth that out a little bit. And that's time. So in five minutes, we've got the beginnings of a dragon's head. It's not very complicated. It's not, hey Google, stop. It's not very complicated. It's not very hard to do. And this is something that I wanted to show you guys to encourage you just to try things out because sculpting is supposed to be fun and it's supposed to be something that you can do, you know, pretty quickly, pretty easily and just play around with and see your ideas. Now, you know, I don't know if this I don't know if this dragon would make it to the final cut. I'm sure there's a lot of things that we could do with it, but you can see that in five minutes, we've got what you can clearly see is a reptilian type of maybe dragon head. It's got a lot more work that could go into it to create some more details, but if you're trying to go for some type of cartoony dragon, this is a great way to start. So let me encourage you to start sculpting if you're not sculpting. It's a lot of fun and you can create some really, really cool things using dynamic topology and the sculpting brushes that we have available to us. So with that said, guys, I'm Sir Pinkbeard. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.